I've been able to build a seven figure Amazon business based on the fact that you can buy items like this pair of shoes for $90 and sell it on Amazon over here for $180. But a lot of times there's more than meets the eye to those potential product leads. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down some specific example products that you might wanna sell in your Amazon business or you might not. We're gonna go ahead and break down the reasoning behind all of these leads. So by the end of this video, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what a good Amazon product looks like versus a bad Amazon product. But before we do that, if you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. Super excited to break down some of these leads with you. And if you are a newer seller or you're just looking for more free resources to take advantage of, beneath me in the description, there's a link for our completely free Amazon seller Discord community. So over 45,000 Amazon sellers in there sharing a ton of free information. Would love to see you in there, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. So just like we were talking about at the beginning of this video here, let's go ahead and start talking about these specific shoes. In this case, I was able to find these, you know, these shoes from Dillard's going for $90 a pair. And then over here on Amazon, I noticed that the exact same pair of shoes is selling for $180. It's even a little bit higher than that. In this case, it's at $184 is what it's currently selling for. And if we were to pay $90 for that, in theory, we would make $58 in profit. And so we're going to be breaking down several example product leads just like this one. And I'll show you whether or not you would probably want to buy it or not buy it. So let's just go ahead and jump into the data here. The first thing I check on pretty much every Amazon listing is just scrolling down here to the Keepa chart, plugging in, you know, that basic information. In this case, you know, I'm buying it for 90, selling for 180, plugging that into seller amp and just getting a rough idea of what my profit might look like on this item. When we look down here at the Keepa chart, we're also going to be able to see kind of the history of this item, right? So we're going to be able to see that over the last 90 days, this is the exact price. So you can see, you know, here on March 24th, somebody was priced at $178. And then back here, we can even zoom out, look like Zappos, the, you know, the big brand used to sell these for $90. So a couple things I'm looking out for on a listing like this one, typically this would be a decent product, right? You're looking at it. The price has been pretty stable. It's been at 180 bucks for quite a while. The other thing that I like to check on listings like this is go to variations. And then I'll just grab the ASIN from seller up over here. And once this goes ahead and loads, go right there contains and throw the ASIN in there. Just kind of a really quick way to see the exact shoe you're looking at in terms of all its variations, because this sales number right here, this 131 sales a month is going to be split between each different type of the shoe. So all the different colors, all the different sizes sell about 131 times a month. And so in this case, when I'm zooming in and looking at kind of the ratings history here, I'm noticing that there's only been two recent ratings increases, which are pretty rare on Amazon to get a rating, to get a review. And you got to think, you know, when was the last time that you left a review for a product on Amazon? It's probably been a while, right? So so even though it's been only two ratings, this does mean that the product could legitimately have sold, but it's probably not the fastest seller in the world. So especially when we take away the ace in there, sometimes I'll try to filter by ratings here. And when you compare that to some of these listings here, where you can see how much faster these ratings are increasing, you can tell that these are probably the different sizes that are selling a little bit faster than the one we were just looking at. The other problem I noticed with this listing is the price of the other variations. So we can go variations down here. And then in this case, I just want to see what the price of the other gray variations are so we can go color contains gray and then that's going to filter out everything that's not the gray variations here maybe even filtered by ratings and something that i noticed as i was scrolling through the other sizes on this shoe is that almost all the other sizes are way way cheaper so you can see this one's 120 dollars the size nine and a half size 10 is 110 dollars size eight is expensive but it's not really getting any ratings this one's at 198 108 and if you're looking at the prices that way let's say even on average if you're selling that for 115 bucks at that point you're making zero dollars that is not exactly the business we want to be in. So to me, this listing is a little bit of a red flag in that regard where we might see some price tanking. Another thing that I try to consider on my listings is the full picture of the item. So when we zoom out to the past year, we can tell that almost, you know, right within that three month period there, that's been the only time period where the price has been that high. I'm even, I'm even surprised it's been that high for a little while here. So to me, this is definitely on the riskier side of products. Let me know if you would buy this product. I personally would probably pass on something like this. To me, there's way too much risk, especially based on the fact that all the other sizes are still the same price, the same low price, and these are still in stock, kind of retail price, all that good stuff over here. To me, I would personally avoid this listing. Let me know if you would buy a couple of these. I just wanted to show you that as an example of a product that seems good at first glance, but might not be. So let's go ahead and take a look at a product that might be a little bit better, something you might want to look out for in your Amazon business. So I noticed that these, this little soap here on the brand's website is going for $4. And then over here on Amazon, the same exact item is going for about $15, which is crazy. 
crazy if you're paying fifteen dollars for this soap i don't know what you're doing but again first thing you want to check on pretty much all these listings here plug it into seller amp how much am i going to make in this case four dollars up to 15 we might make almost another four dollars we might double our money a little bit here so the other thing i want to check is the keep a chart right how consistent is the pricing are the sales kind of tapering off are they looking good are they speeding up and so to do that i'm going to even simplify this a little bit so this purple line right up here that's the buy box price so anytime there's a button that says add to cart that's going to be the price that's showing up here that's the buy box that's where the vast majority of sales on amazon go through and then the green line here is showing me sales rank roughly every time it drops it sells but that's a very rough estimate it is not one to one but you can kind of keep in mind the more that it's dropping the faster the item is selling the closer the sales rank is to one the faster the item sells so in this case it looks like it's a decently high bsr right now but it's been a little bit lower seems like it may just not have sold for a day or two in this case it made its way up to 300,000 bsr so this definitely isn't one of the fastest selling products in the world by any means but a couple things here show me that this product is probably actually selling and we can see this consistent pattern on the keep a chart here seller amp is telling us that it's estimated to sell about 29 times a month and honestly i'm not usually a huge fan of slow selling products especially a product that might be a much slower seller in this case we can go ahead and zoom out over the last year the price has been much more consistent you know even if our price went down to like 1250 where it used to be we're still making money we're still making a dollar 50 a unit it's not exactly where you want to be at and i don't want you to think this is like a home run product but i just want to bring it up as an example product that we kind of stumbled across and this probably would be something that we would pull the trigger on you're not going to want to pull the trigger on a ton of units by any means probably a slower seller for sure but you can still see that this item is selling the keeper chart looks pretty good on something like this so you might be good to pick up 5 10 15 units of this sit on it for a month sell out and make those good high rois and a lot of times if you are kind of a cash strapped amazon seller it can be good to go for products like this that have high roi maybe sell a little bit slower so you can stretch your capital a little bit further the downside to that strategy is if you buy these slower selling products and something starts going wrong so let's say multiple sellers start hopping on the listing everything goes bad you're going to be having a hard time trying to liquidate before the price drops let's say the same listing is selling 3,000 times a month you'd have so many more sales in between there during the time that the price is dropping where you'd be able to make sales at $13 and $12 and continually going down until you're you know genuinely losing money so that's the downside to buying low volume products is that there's just more risk of the prices dropping because there's less volume to kind of make up for the fact that maybe more sellers want to hop on a listing or something like that so I just want to make sure you're, you're thinking about that here's an example of a decent product far from a home run product but I will show you how to find more products based on kind of this idea towards the end of the video so make sure you stick around if you're not even sure how we might have found these products this next thing I want to point out is a product that I probably would not buy let me know if you can tell why I would not buy this product personally some of you guys might disagree with me though and in which case you could go far away probably not now that it's on YouTube kind of another disclaimer I wouldn't buy anything we're kind of showing off here just because it is on YouTube now so we've got nine dollar buy cost over here on walgreens.com for this flat pressed powder foundation back over here on Amazon we got the exact same product going for about $17 so to me right here looking at this item we see a lot of stability see even the price up at like $19.50 recently the price has been around $17.50 for quite a while but some of you guys might be noticing the problem with this item already so let's go ahead and see how much money we'd be making so $8.99 we can do times 0.85 because I noticed up here on the top Walgreens doing an extra 15% off code so with that in mind we're gonna be buying this item for $7.64 selling it right now for $17.42 which gives us $3 profit 41% ROI another thing you can take advantage of on listings like this is the fact that you see how this price is kind of oscillating around like this seller right here is making sales at $17.44 but this same seller made sales at $19.78 so honestly if like if I was on this listing I might buy a little bit less of this product set my minimum on my repricer to like $19 so hey don't lower my price below $19 and then whenever the buy box rotates back up to above $19 I'd be able to make those $19 sales which is much more profitable great ROI in this case but let me talk about why I think this lead might be a little bit of a trap something to be on the lookout for for you while you are sourcing so the problem I identified here is you can see back here in February this listing had nine sellers on it and it sold for 1744 back here in early early February same deal four sellers going for $19 and now today you have 29 sellers on it and it's still selling for 1744 so to me there's clearly a little bit of a mismatch between supply and demand right looking at the sales rank here nothing's really changed the sales rank has been about the same right around 20,000 split between some of these other variations so maybe this variation started selling faster sometimes it can be hard to tell but to me there's nothing that really indicates that this product started selling so much faster that it was able to compensate for all that extra supply that you can see down here now that we have like 30 sellers or so on this listing so when I see listings like this personally I'll try to zoom out a little bit and get a better idea of what this listing has looked like especially in this case if I ever see listings where the number of new sellers is kind of spiking like that where the uh, supply is getting really high the demand staying about the same sometimes I'll see if there's ever been 
that many sellers on it before and see what the price was there. That can kind of help me kind of get an idea for what the price might return back to. In this case, we know we're zooming out here. This is us unprecedented. There's never been this many sellers on the listing, even though in the past, this listing has been much cheaper, sold by Amazon. So take it with a grain of salt. Amazon often doesn't even make money on selling things on their platform. So and that could not be a profitable price, but you got to think about the fact that for as long as this item has existed, there's never been this many sellers. And this is almost as expensive as it's ever been. So combining those two things together, that makes it a little bit of a riskier item in this case. Some of you guys might disagree with you. Some of you guys might pull the trigger on something like this. And there's a case to be made where maybe you do hop on this and you still make money. I just want you to be aware that this is kind of on the riskier side. So let me know if you guys would buy this product as well. One last thing that I would probably check on this listing as well is grabbing the ASIN from seller up over here, throwing it down there, and then seeing how many ratings it has recently. So you can see compared to that last product we were looking at, this product's gone from, you know, 1851 up to 1867. So it's had about 16 ratings over the last 30 days. So about five or so a month, you got to imagine that less than, you know, two or three percent of people for sure are leaving ratings on this. So that could be a pretty good amount of sales on this listing. Hard to really know because there can be some like statistical anomalies and a bunch of people leave ratings out of nowhere. To me, that shows that this product is probably selling a little bit. So there could genuinely be the demand here to meet this increasing sellers. I just want you to be aware, look out for this pattern on the keep a chart here. This could probably be something that I would personally pass on. I and mean, this was actually a lead that one of our virtual assistants found that we did deny for that exact reason. So the next thing I want to go ahead and point out to you is another super common, very quick mistake that we'll just go ahead and show off here. So this next product that I picked out for us here, I just wanted to use as a super quick example. So I noticed over here on CVS.com, they're running a buy one, get one free sale on these, which can be great sales. Always be on the lookout for good sales like this. Buy one, get one free, buy one, get one 25% or 25% site wide. Anytime you see a sale like that, you should see dollar signs and start digging a little bit deeper, seeing what other products you might be able to find in that sale. So we kind of stumbled across this where it's buy one, get one free. So we're paying $15 a unit on this over here on Amazon. And we noticed this on for $38, but some of you guys can probably already see the issue with this. Just wanted to put drop a really quick note in here. Make sure you pay extra attention to all of your listings. In this case, this is a 200 count gummy. The one over here was a 60 count gummy. You'd have some very unhappy customers. Another thing that is going to be very useful on listings like this is to check kind of the supplement facts on the back. So in this case, I believe we have the same supplement. It's just kind of a different multi-pack in this case. But a lot of times if you're unsure, if you're looking at the same product, checking the UPC, in this case, we literally have the UPC right there and we have the supplement supplement facts. Those are two data points that you can check to see if you have the exact same item. So in this case, we would have had the, this UPC up there. If you checked this UPC, you would have noticed that it was different. We got the UPC showing up there in Celeramp. And then over here on these supplement facts, you're probably going to see that this is the same supplement if we zoom in a little bit. So you can see, you know, that 25, 6, 4, 10. I'll just usually try to remember a couple numbers. So 24, 6, 10, and then 550, 500 milligrams and 50 milligrams. So same exact breakdown here, but it's just kind of a quantity mismatch. So be on the lookout for that. Another example lead that we were able to find were these gel pens right here from Cricut. We also found a 10% code from Capital One Shopping. So make sure you're checking coupon extensions, you know, Honey, Capital One Shopping, Rakuten, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you have at least one of those Chrome extensions so you can check for coupon codes automatically. And then over here on Amazon, I noticed that the same set of pens here is going for $20.97. Looking at the past history of this item here, it seems like this has been a relatively stable price for at least a few months now. Zooming out into the past, seems like it used to be a little bit lower. So let's go ahead and see like what's our worst case scenario if that price does drop back down. So we got them for $9, 10% code we found on Capital One Shopping there. And then right now they're selling for about $21. So right now we're at a $5 profit, 51% ROI. If our price goes back down to $16.50, we are not necessarily making a lot of money, but you know, we at least made a dollar. We're paying off of our kind of box costs and label costs and all that kind of stuff. So this would be something I'd be a little bit more inclined to take advantage of just because our downside is still making profit and probably replacing all of your expenses at least. And then our upside is, you know, obviously making decent money. And another thing that's stuck out to me on this listing is that the current buy box owner is you know Amazon Global Store UK, which is an FBM seller. If you come on this listing as an FBA seller, you're going to have faster shipping than the global store here. So you're going to be able to hog buy box and make more sales than Amazon. And you can already see what we were talking about a second ago, where the FBA prices, you can often get sales way higher. Seems like this seller right here is making sales at $25, even though the buy box tends to want to hang out at like 21 bucks. So I bet if you came on this listing and priced at like 22 or 23 bucks, buy box would just consistently go to you and probably not go to global store anymore. So in that case, if you list FBA, you could probably be making just put it at 22 or even 23. Both of those very, very solid ROIs there. The other thing we want to check, I did notice that it is a variation listing. It's telling us it's a variation listing here. So I want to grab this ASIN, go over here, contains that ASIN. And then as we do that, we can see that this rating count is increasing very, very quickly recently. One thing that stuck out to me as a red flag about this listing is you see how it kind of wasn't selling at all. And then suddenly it started selling out of nowhere. To me, that looks like when the listings were merged. So this used to be a listing by itself, got combined with some 
other listings that are very similar. So it's all just like gel pens and that kind of thing. And it took advantage of that. And now that it merged those listings, it seems like it's a much faster selling product than it used to be, especially based on, you know, this past keeper chart here. When the item is selling this slow, these really are just one sale. So you can see one, two, three, and so on. So there's very few sales on this item. The listings got merged. You can see those, the variations here. You can see the different ratings history increasing very, very quickly. So you can tell there's ratings coming on, which means that it has to be selling. I mean, honestly, pretty quickly with that level of ratings. So this is not a bad product at all. I would definitely pull the trigger on this. But if you're not at all sure how we were able to find products like this, I'm going to give you a super quick rundown on how we were able to find this. I would recommend you go check out an, a more in-depth YouTube video, but let's go ahead and just kind of quickly take advantage. So quick refresher here. So go to seller amp over here on the, you know, the side, and then I'm going to look at a different FBA seller. So in this case, we had Amazon global store. They're going to have a bunch of, you know, kind of random stuff, but this seller right here, they've only got 45 feedback. They're doing FBA. So they shipped into Amazon and that's what a lot of you guys are going to want to take advantage of. So let's just go ahead and click on them. And based on the fact that they were selling this item profitably, it's very likely that there's going to be other items in their storefront that are also profitable. So at this point, it's your job to look through the different storefronts and start taking note of the brands that people are selling well. Start taking note of you know, these different products in this case, like max cost $20. Do I think I can buy this item for $20? If you don't know the answer, hit the Google shopping button and it's going to pull up kind of the answer for you in this case. So 29, 29. So maybe we're able to find like a coupon code somewhere. Maybe we aren't you hunt around for a little bit. You know, Walmart and Target aren't going to run coupon codes usually. So maybe find it on like the Disney website or something like that. You might be able to stack a coupon code, but this is going to make you so much faster. This is how we do it. I'm going to put a video right up here in the top. That's going to show you how to do this strategy in more detail. It's called reverse sourcing. It's probably the best way to start finding your first products as a beginner. So I hope you guys got a ton of value out of just breaking down a couple example leads there, breaking down why or why not we would want to buy it. If you guys do not already have access to that data we were looking at on Selleramp, make sure you go ahead and activate a two week free trial down below. Go ahead and check it out. Start sourcing products with Selleramp. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, that you're wondering throughout the video, feel free to drop those down below. Always happy to answer those for you guys. And then especially if you did get value out of this video, if you want to add a little bit of that value back to my business and hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate that as well. But I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.